Hello, my name is Otis, and today I wanted to go over some UI settings that a lot of people, and I mean a lot, a lot of people, like you probably don't even know about this. This is literally my most asked question that I get. I'm asked it every time I stream. I'm asked it every single video that I upload. In every single comment section on every single one of my videos, you will find someone asking, how do you get that UI? What add-on is that? So today, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys these interface settings because none of this is add-on. None of my UI is actually an add-on, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to set this stuff up for yourself. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. First of all, let's talk about my raid profile. That is what these are called, my party icons. This is a raid profile. So the way that you actually set this up is super easy, is go to your interface options and down here in raid profiles, you will find the settings. By default, it looks like this. This is what it will look like default. Now what I do is I come in and I click use raid style party frames and this will automatically set it to that. Then I also tell it to auto activate on two, five, and actually I do 10 players. Then I do blood, frost, or unholy. If you uncheck these, I'll say profile will never auto activate. No talent specialization is selected. I select all of these because for me, my profile stay the same regardless of what spec I want to run. However, if you're a healer or a tank and you want to specify certain parameters for how you want this stuff to look based on your different specializations, then you can absolutely do that by just selecting, let's say I want a blood one, I'll hit save on this and then I can go over here and I can select a frost one. And then I'll have two different profiles that will look completely different at different settings dependent on my actual spec. So I'm gonna go back to arena here. This is basically my primary one. I'm a PVP -er, so to me arena is party. You get the idea. Once you have this done, then you never click keep groups together unless you are a raid leader. Otherwise it will put your tanks and your healers all over the place inside the group and it won't prioritize them at the top left hand corner like it does by default. You can also do this and sort your group by role or group or alphabetical. There's a lot of different options you have there, but for me and for most of you, I recommend just keeping it the way it is. From there, you want to make sure that display incoming healing is active. This will show whether or not someone has a shield on them. This will also show in their party thing whenever they're about to receive a heal, it will show you how much they're actually about to be healed for. This is important for any class that you want to see what is this flash of light about to heal this person for. Well, it will show kind of a transparent-ish uh, health bar behind them and it'll show it's going to heal them for like 25% of their health or something like that. And you can visually see that. So you know whether or not you're going to be overhealing someone by a lot. You can tell whether or not this is going to top them off or if you need to go ahead and queue up another heal directly behind it. This is really useful for that kind of stuff. The next thing is display power bars. And please, please, if you're a DPS, this doesn't matter so much. But if you're a tank or a healer, really, but especially a tank, please turn this on. Without this, your bars look like that. If you display power bars, it'll show you your healer's mana bar. It will show you your caster's mana bar. This way, as a tank, you can ensure that you're never, you know, pulling the next group of mobs when your healers have no mana. As a DPS and as a more experienced player, I leave these on because I want to know when my when we die, I want to know whether or not it was because our tank pulled the group with while our healer was oom. To me, that's just like, you know, it's just make sure that I know what's happening in the group. And so that's why I suggest that everyone has this on, but this is especially important for tanks. The next one is display class colors. Without that on, you just get the basic green. This is obviously kind of ugly and also doesn't tell you really anything. This tells me exactly who's in my group, what class they're running, and just is much, much nicer. So I definitely suggest turning on display class colors. The next one is display pets. And this one is very important for you healers out there because trust me, all of our, all of us pet class DPS, all we want for Christmas is a healer that's gonna heal our pet every now and again. So this allows you to do that and it will show you if anyone has any pets and it will put them on a little bar either at the bottom or beside your party frames. The next one is display main tank and assist. You definitely want this on so that you can see, you know, who's the who's the tank, who has raid assist, all that kind of stuff. It just puts a little emblem on their thing. Perfect. Definitely something you want turned on. The next one is display border. And I leave this off because it gives you this clean look. With it on, you get this. So it's personal preference, doesn't change anything other than that. I suggest leaving it off because I think it looks a little bit cleaner. The next one is show debuffs and you want this enabled, whether you're PVE or PVP. This will show if someone stands in a raid mechanic that stuns them, 
or if your healer is stuck in some kind of dungeon mechanic that you got to break them out of in pvp this shows when people get hit by cc this is extremely 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 important even if you're not the person who actually pays attention to that stuff leave this stuff on because it will be the first step you take towards becoming a better player and actually paying attention to what cc and what negative of debuffs your party actually has on them this is a huge first step to becoming kind of a better player that pays a better attention to what's actually happening around them and to their team. The next thing is display health text. This is super important. For you healers, I suggest you play with health remaining. This will show you their actual health pull by numerically, and it will show you, it will add on to this. It'll do all kinds of magic stuff whenever you're trying to heal people. It will, it'll show you how much health they're going to end up coming out with. If you had display incoming heals, it'll calculate how much HP they're going to have after the heal goes off. This is super important, once again, for not overhealing, for knowing whether or not you need to queue up that next heal or not. This is going to be a definite big help for being a better healer in PvE or PvP. As a DPS, and specifically as a DPS whose healing is percentage-based, it is really important for me to just have percentages on. This means I don't have to look up at my own character pane that often. I don't need to look up here ever. And we'll get into like my runes, my runic power, power bar a little more later. But I can just look up here and I can see I have 100% HP. You know, I can look and see I have 75% HP. And I know that my death strike is going to heal me for 5% of that. This is really, really important, especially for percentage based classes. But I also prefer percentages over numerical values anyways. And so this looks better to me but you can choose any of these but for healers i really suggest that you choose health remaining because it will help you become a better healer if you use it properly finally we have sizes and that is just simple frame height and frame width now this is where the uh, the extra profiles come in for arenas and for dungeons this is basically my primary profile and this is why it's two through ten that way my frames are all as big as they can get so i can see everything However, if you are in a 15, 25, or 40 man group and you have this set this way, your entire screen is going to be consumed by nameplates. So, for larger group content, I have a second profile that I have named RBGs. Once again, I'm a PvPer, but this is what your raid profile would officially look like if you were a pro if you were a raider. And what I have here is it's basically the exact same thing except that it's set up to go off specifically when I'm in groups that are 10 man or larger actually and change that because 10 man i like the old one as well it's specifically designed to go off with 15 man groups or larger and this is once again going to be your best friend in raid and i have it set to be a little bit smaller just so that i can actually fit 25 people or even 40 people on my screen relatively easily without it consuming a ton of real estate now as you can see i have this turned on to auto activate pretty much under any circumstance where i'm in a 15 to 40 man group but you may have a specific profile for raid a specific profile for bgs a specific profile for arena and maybe even for dungeons as well and you can set that up to automatically activate whether you're in pvp or pve based on the group size based on your specialization and so there's a ton of control and customization available in these raid profiles hey editor nick here so i actually forgot to tell you guys how to actually move your raid profiles once they're set up. So let's go ahead and go over that real quick. Uh, basically, you come over to this little drop box over here. It will always be there if you have raid profiles turned on. And you open that up and you click the little unlock button here. And you can slide them around like this. The way you resize the actual like footprint that it takes up. Because as I showed you before, you resize the individual plates inside the interface options. So to actually change the footprint, like if I had a big raid team, I do it through this. So if I have it like this, it's going to line all of my nameplates up like this in a row. If I have it expanded all the way out, then it will take up this entire space I've denoted for nameplates. So you figure out the space that works properly for the area on your screen that you like to have it. I like to have mine a little bit closer into my character so I can look over at it easier and see what's happening with my team. But if you want, if you're in a big group, or if you just want them kind of out of the way, then it easily snaps right onto this border. You click the lock button and you can go ahead and put them right back to where they are by default. Oh, and anytime you want to, you can come over here and click the hide button and it will hide it if you just don't want to see it, which is something that I am definitely guilty of doing in battlegrounds and stuff like that. So that's an easy way to get that stuff off your screen if you don't want it to be there. Let's go ahead and get back to the video.
all right so the next thing that i want to show you guys is the health and resource display this is super 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 simple and it's a question i get asked literally all the time and so let's go ahead and nip that in the bud right now so what the health and resource display is, is it's a little bar that appears down here. And the way that you turn it on is you hit escape, go to interface, and then you come down to names. Under unit nameplates, you will see a button called personal resource display. I turn this on and I hit okay. And then I hit something going to combat. And as you can see, I have a health bar, my runic power bar, and my runes all displayed here. Everything changes in real time and it allows me to basically just not have to ever really look up here much unless I'm looking at my enemies debuffs which is of huge help as you guys can imagine and that's the reason why I'm asked about this thing literally every single day people think it's a weak aura but it's not I've recently transitioned to an actual weak aura however before that I was using this for years and it works absolute wonders there are a couple of settings tied to this you can click to show special resource on your target and this will literally put your uh for as a dk here I'll, I'll put my runes on my target's nameplate as you guys can see i have another add-on that makes my debuffs on my target super big and so that kind of doesn't work well with the rune display so i leave it on my regular resource bar now just to make sure that we are all covered i'm going to go over the nameplate options here because that's another thing that i've been asked although not as common so let's go ahead and go into that the first thing is i always have my name turned on because to me it's just how it's supposed to be it's just how it's supposed to happen so i have that turned on i turn off critters and companions i don't care about your critters pet you know your pet's name honestly uh, i turn friendly player names on so i can easily tell who people are you are a Lindry, you know, of the Alliance and all that good stuff. As for other people's names, I have enemy players and minions turned on so that I can see where enemy players are in the world at all times. Uh, I have this on to hostile quests and interactive P NPCs for NPC names. That way I'm not busy trying to talk to a NPC that isn't interactable, like a vendor or something like that. This just shows me the NPCs that actually do something for me and it helps me to navigate around a little bit better. Now for more specific settings on nameplates, I highly suggest you do larger nameplates without this enabled. Your nameplates look all teeny beeny like that and you can't do anything with that in my opinion. It's just too small. I just don't even notice they're there. So I turn on larger nameplates so that I can see that stuff more easily. I have flash on aggro loss. This is specifically for like tanks and stuff, but this can be useful for DPS and PVP. It's nice to know because if a enemy player decides to stop hitting you and hit your ally, the game instantly tells you that you don't have to like register in your brain. Oh, they've like turned around and now they're hitting my monk or something like that. You just see it. Oh, they're not hitting me anymore. They're hitting somebody else. This is also why I do target of target on my target, right? Like this so that I can see who people are targeting. And that just helps me to understand who is getting attacked right now. What's kind of happening in the game at the moment. And as you can see here, I have enemy units, minions and minor. I have uh, minor enabled, but actually should be minions and minor not uh, disabled. That was just something that went wrong during my server transfer, but uh, you want minions turned on this can be very helpful for watching succubuses and stuff like that and knowing when they're going to casting you, you see their cast bars and all that uh minor the minor pets don't really ever do anything and you know so it's like why there's not really a big deal they re really just kind of add clutter to the screen in my opinion so i just don't turn these on and then for friendly players i leave this disabled because i'm not a healer uh but of course i could always just hit shift feet and turn them on like that if i ever wanted to see where my allies are and finally we have the nameplate motion type we have overlapping and stacking so the difference what these actually do i'll go ahead and show you let's line these up so we have a lot of nameplates stacked right on top of each other it's all a big old jumbled mess overlapping will cause these to overlap like that you can kind of see behind and through my uh plate here it'll overlap if you have stacking on what happens is they stack up like this now stacking up is nice so you can actually see different nameplates they don't all mesh together but you do run into a problem that when you have larger groups specifically in pve then what will happen is a lot of the nameplates will actually float so high up that they're no longer on the screen anymore and this means you're missing valuable information and maybe the one that you really need to target his nameplate's the one that's way up in the sky and so you you can't click his nameplate to target him so you've got to actually like click on his body which as we all know when you have 10 or 15 mobs all around you isn't exactly an easy feat so for me overlapping is best and if there's someone i need to target that i can't see i just will readjust my camera 
this is just a little bit easier for me if you prefer stacking you prefer stacking i'm just showing you what i use and why to me this makes my life a little bit easier to quickly target enemies so that is all the secrets to the world of warcraft interface options and stuff that you guys probably didn't know but now you do and now you're going to be able to set up your ui to be super cool and you don't need any fancy add-ons that are a pain in the butt to maintain and set up you can just do it all through the default blizzard ui i hope that you guys liked this video if you did please hit that like button it helps tremendously with the algorithm and if you want to see more videos like this hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring that bell notification so you get notified when i upload a video thank you so much for watching and i hope you all have a great day